Hey everybody, I hope you guys are healthy and safe. So the Android phone scene is very crowded. Every year there's like 15 to 20 flagship phones being released. And I think Asus knows this because about three years ago, it kind of decided to zig where others zag, to go against industry trends. With its ROG phone series, Asus basically set out to make the biggest and baddest phone around. And then with its flagship phone, the Zen phone series, Asus is making the most compact yet feature-packed phone around. This is the Asus Zenfone 10. I've been using it for about two and a half weeks now. And yeah, this is the best small phone in the world right now. But I guess that doesn't say a lot because almost nobody else is making small phones. So the Zenfone 10 will look familiar if you have seen the Zenfone 9 because Asus decided to bring back the exact same design language. You do get two new colorways, including this light baby blue, North Carolina blue, and a green color that I actually think look quite good too. The red, white, and black colorways from last year also make a return, so you have a total of five colors. The Zenfone 10 is launching first in Taiwan and in Europe, but ASUS did already confirm a US launch is coming. The price in Europe is 799 euros, which is around like 810 US dollars. We can expect the price to stay about at that 800 ish range when it launches in the US. You get a Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chip, a 5.9 inch 144 hertz OLED display. I do think maximum brightness, it's a little bit below par compared to something like a Xiaomi 13 Ultra. Like if I look at both screens right now, the Xiaomi screen is clearly brighter than the Asus screen. And I do want to clarify that the maximum screen brightness here isn't bad. It's just not as good as the Xiaomi 13 Ultra or the iPhone 14 Pro Max, basically the best of the bunch. But other than the lower maximum brightness, I don't really have any complaints. Color accuracy looks great, viewing angles look good, and the 144 hertz refresh rate is buttery smooth. Now you only get to hit 144 when you're gaming, when you're on like normal phone mode, it's 120. This 5.9 inch screen size is apparently like a Goldilocks size according to Azure. They've done research and they decided that for the average human hand, the distance from left to right has to be under 70 millimeters. Anything over 70 millimeters, you cannot reach the other end of the screen with your thumb for most average humans. So for the Zenfone 9, it uses a 20 by 9 aspect ratio. The distance from left to right, it's 68.1 millimeters. So it just fits into that sub 70 millimeter range that Asus set out to do. And I can confirm that my thumb can indeed reach all the way across easily. So that means this is a phone that I can type with one hand very easily. And I like that the frame of the phone, it's aluminum and it's flat, but the corners are a little bit chamfered. So they do not dig into your palms like an iPhone or Galaxy S23 Ultra. This is a very comfortable in-hand feel. I'm a fan of the sandstone finish, which was introduced with the Zenfone 9. So this is the second year to doing it. Thickness is 9.3 millimeters. It's a little bit thicker than usual, but that's because this phone houses a relatively large 4,300 milliamp hour battery. Considering this is a small phone, 4,300 mAh is really good and battery life is excellent too. So you can expect at least 5 hours of screen on time and 13 to 14 hours of heavy use out and about. Despite the large battery, the phone still weighs very light at 182 grams. So this is like 30, 40, 50 grams lighter than most modern flagships out on the market. All the components are either top notch or near top notch. You have Wi-Fi 7 support, Bluetooth 5.3, UFS 4.0 storage, and LPDDR5X RAM. The battery can be charged at 30 watt wired or 15 watt wirelessly. The 30 watt charger is included with the box. You have stereo speakers and a headphone jack and the SIM tray supports dual SIM too. So basically all the things that you would expect from a phone is here. Now as for optics, the hardware mostly remained the same as last year. You have a 50 megapixel main camera, f 1.9 aperture, one over 1.56 inch image sensor size. The image sensor, it's, I wouldn't say it's large, but it's not small either. It does produce a little bit of natural shallow bokeh and in theory it takes in a lot of light. However, Asus still resort to night mode a little bit too often in my opinion, just like with the Asus Zenfone 9. This main camera is also supported by a 6-axis gimbal system, so it's a miniature gimbal built inside the main camera module. If you actually look closely at the main camera and you shift the phone a little bit, you can see the main camera kind of float around. So this gimbal, it will not only stabilize up and down and left and right movement, but also this movement, you know, like this movement right here. This is called the yaw movement or the Z-axis movement. 
but this is the part where the gimbal kicks in. Now I can't say the gimbal makes a huge difference because modern day smartphones have really good OIS and EIS already. But right here, I'm gonna hold an iPhone 14 Pro Max and a Zoom Zenfone 10 and just go up the stairs and then come back down. And you can see that the Zenfone 10's footage is a little bit more stable because I'm holding both phones with one hand. So when I'm walking down the stairs, there's gonna be a little bit of that yaw movement right here. And that's where the gimbal makes a difference. Like I said, the difference isn't huge, but it does help, particularly when I'm panning with one hand because my other hand is busy holding something else. Footage does appear a little bit more fluid, like it's if it's floating on a gimbal. So for stabilization, ASUS is not just counting entirely on the gimbal system. ASUS has also built a very intelligent adaptive EIS in which, you know, the phone will kind of know the context of what you're filming and then decide how much to crop in in real time and adjust on the fly. So you get more cropping when you need more EIS and less cropping when you don't. But if you do need extreme stabilization, there's a hyper study mode that will crop in the most and also limit your resolution to 1080p, but you get very, very stable footage. So I'm gonna film a hyper study video right now. I'm gonna kind of run in a circle. Down here is a 13 megapixel ultra wide camera, f2.2 aperture. It captures a sweeping field of view, but I think photos and videos are mostly fine during the day only. When you shoot in low light conditions, it suffers from very soft details like most other phones, ultra wide cameras out there. The only phone with a really great ultra wide is the Oppo Find X6 Pro. Other than that, everyone else, I would say they're like a tier below. Around the front, you have a 32 megapixel selfie camera. I have no complaints whatsoever. I think the selfie camera does the job and the selfie camera can shoot in 4K resolution, which a lot of Chinese phones cannot do. Now the Zenfone 10 does not have an in-display fingerprint scanner. Instead, the fingerprint scanner is embedded into the power button on the right side. I'm not always a fan of side-mounted fingerprint scanners because sometimes the power button is a little bit too high up, like on a Pixel Fold. It's actually quite hard for me to reach. But I have no complaints of the Zenfone 10 because the power button is right in the middle, so it's very easy to reach. In fact, ASUS has clearly put a lot of thought into its hardware and software to make everything easy to reach. I'm not just talking about physical buttons, but also software buttons. Like for example, when you open up an app tray, I like that all the app icons open at the bottom of the screen instead of in the middle. I don't know why, like this is something that seems very basic, but a lot of phone brands don't do this. Like with a Xiaomi 13 Ultra, for example, if you tap on the app icon, the app opens in the middle. So right now, if I hold my phone with my left hand, I actually have a little bit of trouble reaching the icon all the way on the right upper corner. I would be able to reach it if you just open the app folder at the bottom of the screen. And even the power button, you have a gesture, you have a swipe gesture that you can assign to do other things. Like you can swipe on it to bring down the notification shade or swipe on it to bring up Google Assistant. This phone is just jam packed with things to make your phone usage experience a little bit easier. And I think Azu should be applauded for giving us so many of these options because so overall, I'm very happy with the Zenfone in terms of both hardware and software. Battery life is great. The phone can handle gaming. It doesn't really heat up. Battery life is great. The phone can handle gaming pretty well. Eight gigs of RAM isn't a lot, but the phone zips around without any issues. The software feels fast. The only two nitpicks I have would be the screen's maximum brightness is not the high, and also there's no zoom lens. But I guess considering that this is only an $800 phone, I can't really expect a periscope zoom lens anyway. So overall, the Zenfone 10 does a good job at what it's aiming to do. And if you're someone who wants a small flagship phone, this is the best on the market right now. It is the only game in town actually. So you should definitely give this a consideration. However, I have said this in the past, I'm actually not a small phone guy. I am someone who consume a lot of content, you know, whether it's Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, and I also type a lot. And so I would just rather have a bigger screen. 5.9 inches sometimes does feel a little bit cramped, but I am not the target audience of this phone. If you are someone who's been lamenting how big phones are getting, then this is the phone for you. And I'm just glad that ASUS has made something that stands out from the crowd. This phone doesn't look and feel like 
all the other phones out on the market. Whereas I can't really say that about the Xiaomi 13 Ultra. From the front, it looks just like the Oppo Find X6 Pro, the OnePlus 11. The Zenfone 10 does not, it stands out. And any time a brand does something completely different, it's a good thing because, you know, we need more diversity in all our products. So that's about it for this review of the ASUS Zenfone 10. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to my channel. It will help me a lot. I have a lot more content coming up, including the Google Pixel Fold, a couple of other Huawei devices, and a couple of other Apple devices too. And July is going to be a very, very busy month. I am going to a launch in China. I'm going to a launch in Korea. There's a bunch of stuff coming, so please stay tuned. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.